Well, this is going to be a discussion of the from our heifer development series a couple of years ago and videos to try to be able to apply this to more people, give you more opportunity to look at it, and we're going to talk a little bit about bull selection today. And so sire selection is an important part of heifer development because you guys like the right kind of bull to mate them to. And and if we do that, you know, certainly less chances of surprise if we can use high accuracy calving ease bulls. Low work these EPDs or high calving ease direct. You can select calving ease while still maintaining balanced trait selection because we have a lot of deep EPDs and a lot of bulls in our breeds. Now, and one of the issues is that only 7.6% of beef operations use AI, and you pretty much have to have a AI type sire to have really high accuracy. Uh, you know, bulls certainly there's a lot of potential to find some great bulls out there, and they can be natural service bulls. But as you do that, you need to think about maybe a little more insurance that, and a little more room for error in case they aren't quite as highly accurate. It, it, and it's really kind of a problem to try to work with breeds without genetic predictions. You know, because you know, in that case, you're probably best using direct data that's only the, collect on the animal. You might have it in contemporary groups, but you don't have EPDs. So if you are going to use breeds that are not as high, heavy numbers or not as deep, then you're probably going to want to go ahead and do a lot more uh, looking at more things about that animal and more things deep, digging the pedigree deeper. You need to make sure your cattle fits your market and alternative markets that will work. So if you're going to use a breed that doesn't have a lot of depth, then you need to be sure you're careful on what kind of bulls you use in their heifer development and breeding to heifers. Uh, you know, and, the, and obviously there's a lot of different things that affect calving difficulty, but calf birth weight is one of the biggest things. And so if you look at both Herefords and Angus in this, in this basically really definitive historic study at Miles City, it was a big part of the effect on calving difficulty. And certainly sex of the calf is, relates also to size of the calf. Pelvic ear measurement is important. And gestation length also probably relates to size of that calf. So all those things are a big factor, and, and birth weight is one of the biggest contributors to calving difficulty. And then, you know, a combination of looking at pelvic area and birth weight could be important as well. So you may not eliminate all the problems, which is smaller calves, but if you can also look at maintaining a good pelvic area, it allows you to be sure you're going to have less and less need for assistance. And it's also important to remember that there's a lot of difference between breeds. And we're going to focus a lot on Angus today because a lot of people use Angus for their calving ease type bulls. But certainly all the breeds have differences and there's differences in birth weight. If you look at this particular chart, it shows you that the average animal in the Simmental breed should be all about four pounds bigger, over four pounds bigger than the average calf birth in the Angus breed. And, that's, and that doesn't mean there aren't bulls within all these breeds that might be relatively easy to calve, but there's on the average, there's a lot of difference between breeds, and it's important to keep that in mind, if, especially if you're in a crossbreeding program, because the cow size is going to contribute also half of this genetics that relates to calf size. And if you look at our trend in Angus birth weights, they certainly have gotten larger, but over the last 20 to 25 years, they really haven't increased that much and actually maybe have decreased a little. So, so we've basically made some ability to hold the birth weights pretty well and even make a slight decrease. While we've had increases in Angus growth traits, certainly the yearling weight and weaning weights have gotten bigger. And and heights of those cattle frame size increased dramatically for many years, but then the last 15 to 20 years they have leveled out. So we haven't had as much increase in just frame size. So what are the things you're going to include in your tool selection for using good good bull selection? And it's important that you use EPDs first. It's fine to know the actual birth weights, and that should support your data that you have with EPDs, but not replace it. Because we have so much more depth and so much more prediction to be able to use EPDs. And birth weight is very important, like we've mentioned earlier, but now we have more and more de depth also on calving ease direct and calving ease maternal. So what are those different types of things? What do they really mean? Birth weight is expressed in pounds, and it's sort of predictor of the sire's ability to trans transmit birth weight to the progeny and it compares it to other sires. So basically you'll have a birth weight EPD and that's compared to, you compare that to other bulls birth weight EPDs. Calving ease direct is a number of percentage of unassisted births. A higher number increases, means there's less calving difficulty or increased calving ease in first calf efforts. 
It predicts the average difference in these which sires calves will be born when they're bred to those first calf heifers. So, so really higher numbers are good on calving ease direct. And calving ease maternal is basically looking at those young cows, heifers, if you raise heifers, what, what is there going to be the amount of unassisted births they're going to have and higher value increase grading, greater calving ease. So it's important if you're going to keep back replacement females from these genetic choices you make now, then calving ease maternal is an important trait. So why would you use high accuracy bulls? Well, you know, if you look at the Angus breed and you try to go to the top 10% of the breed for these calving difficulty issues, then certainly uh, with a 0.9 accuracy, birth weight would be a minus 0.6 is what is, is puts you at top 10% or calving ease direct would be 11. And the possible change then, if you have a 90.9 accuracy, would only be 0.26 or 0.8 on calving ease. So not very likely that that isn't going to be correct. It's going to be very close to that number of minus 0.6 or a calving ease of 11. But on the other hand, if you're using a non-parent bull with only a 0.3 accuracy, then the chances are that it could be 1.8 different than that fairly easily on birth weight and, and also 6 different on the, uh, uh, well, 1.8 is your average birth weight and 6 is a calving ease direct, but also the possible change is 1.84 and 5.4. So very likely there could be dramatic difference, and two-thirds of the time there could be a pretty large difference on lower accuracy bulls. So essentially the EPD could be anywhere between, on the 0.3 accuracy one, it might be anywhere between a minus to a plus almost 4 for birth weight EPD, while on the high accuracy bull it's pretty likely it's going to be negative and very small amount of negative, very small range. So it's really important if you can use AI to try to look at high accuracy bulls. The other thing that's really helped us though, even on younger bulls, is using more gen genomics to try to build more depth with that EPD. And so calving ease direct and birth weight are both fairly highly heritable traits when using uh, genetic markers. So if we do this and we use these measures, then that can add accuracy even to them, at least some of these bulls that are non-parents. And that might be something that's going to help you more and more to find higher, highly accurate and more highly accurate bulls with better predictions of what they're going to do on birth weight. Even if you are using AI, though, in most programs, you're going to have a cleanup bull and 40% of the heifers will be mated to natural service bulls. So you cannot ignore doing a good job of selection also on these natural service bulls. And many of you may not want to use AI, and in that case it's even more critical that you look in even in more depth on how predictable was the sire and the maternal grandsire. How, how even though we made a low accuracy bull, are we following a trend that's very strong in the pedigree? And that makes it easier along with just having good sound EPDs to make that be sure it's going to work. So. If you have more questions and want to get more depth on this, one of the great resources out there are your breed associations because most of they do generate sire evaluations. They, a lot of them have searchable sire engines that can let you look at different traits you want and select the bulls, and especially in the AI breed, and also predict then what numbers you need to look at on young bulls as well. And another great resource is the National Beef Cattle Evaluation Consortium has a sire selection manual. And that sire selection manual has really got a lot of tools you could use with all these different issues. So we, feel free also to talk to your local livestock specialist if you have questions.